Hey everyone, so the last thing I thought I'd be doing today after the Nintendo Direct was actually making another news video, but there's too much stuff for me to talk about. Uh, before I do, can you guys help me for a moment? Like seriously, yeah, you can help yourself. You can enter our Switch OLED giveaway by subscribing to the channel, winner announced next Friday. That's all great, but can you guys help me for a second? Because I don't know what to do with this. What, 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 what do I do with this? I, I, I got too many W's lately. I, I, I'm, I'm confused. Like... Look at this, another one? Like what? W is just coming from everywhere. I, I, I don't get it. What am I supposed to do with all my wins lately? I know, channel them into this video because we have updates on stuff that were announced today at the Nintendo Direct. Uh, stuff that you guys are gonna be highly interested in. Uh, so you can call this stuff rumors and leaks and you know we could argue, throw the tinfoil hat on. And yes, absolutely have skepticism. But the video I made this morning and the, the Direct and now we have a massive update today. Let's just say uh, this, this N64 and Genesis stuff coming to Switch isn't just what you might think it is. There's a lot of people out there saying, can we just get virtual console instead? I'm about to explain why this is actually better and we have actual rumors to back this up from the same people that were telling us we were getting this stuff in the first place. Also, by the way, remember when I talked about how Emily Rogers said uh, that we were gonna get Metroid Prime as a solo release in some sort of remake or remaster form? We now have pretty much all the details behind it. And let me tell you, at least based on this rumor, let me tell you, if this stuff is true, Metroid Prime coming to Switch isn't just your everyday remastering. Oh, no, 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 no. Not quite from the ground up, like, remake, but it would definitely be a rather impressive feat and has had years of work put into it by Retro Studios. Years. And we'll explain why that's happening, and apparently why the Metroid Prime Trilogy rumors aren't true, although they do plan to do this to Metroid Prime 2 and 3. So that is something as well. All right, so starting off, we have some updates on the Nintendo 64 and Genesis Online stuff from Emily Rogers. She put out on Twitter after the uh, Nintendo Direct that Nintendo 64 on Nintendo Switch Online will have a much stronger library than the N64 on Virtual Console. I've even heard tiny whispers about Pokemon Stadium, a game that never released on Virtual Console. I'm not sure if that's currently in the cards though. There may be challenges with that. Um, and then she goes on to say, they did announce Dr. Mario 64 for Nintendo Switch Online. And as far as I know, that has never released on Virtual Console. And that is true. Of note, Virtual Console for Nintendo 64 games topped out at just 21 games in the past. And it sounds like it's going to be an even bigger library than that. Obviously, Banjo-Kazooie is a big get. We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, it certainly looks like we're going to get more than 21 total N64 games this time around, which does make this Nintendo Switch online subscription service version better overall you know, than the Virtual Console. Of course, you still might want to buy games individually. But how many times do you want to keep rebuying the same games over and over again? I'd almost rather they be part of a service that just never goes away, right? I kind of feel like what Nintendo's doing with this service is something that's infinitely expandable and also easily portable to future platforms. And that's really good news for us. I'd rather just pay a subscription fee and, and not have to rebuy every time. I know technically you could argue you save money by rebuying. Maybe, maybe not. Especially now that online's locked behind it anyways. But that's neither here nor there. Emily Rogers also tells us about, whew, about Genesis. And this is where things get really, really crazy. So Emily Rogers says, there's way more games planned for Genesis, Nintendo Switch Online, compared to what was available in the Switch Genesis collection that comes out in December. By the way, that collection had 54 games in it. Think about this. Way more games coming to Nintendo Switch Online for Genesis than what was in that collection of 54 games. What? Here's what she says. For example, Nintendo and Sega want third parties to get involved with Genesis Nintendo Switch Online. Um, think Mega Man, Wily Wars, Castlevania Bloodlines, etc. So essentially, Nintendo and Sega are reaching out to all the third parties that ever put games on the Master System, the Mega Drive, whatever you want to call it, the Sega Genesis, uh, different names in different territories with different expansions and all that. Uh, the point is, 
that, yeah, they want pretty much the entire Genesis library to be here. That's what it sounds like to me. And that is wow. That would make it the largest library. Of, I mean, even if it just had the same games that are in the collection pack, 54, that's already bigger than any virtual console system Nintendo's ever offered. But they're going to go beyond that. Let's just say Sega and Nintendo are going all out on Nintendo Switch Online service. And this is glorious. At least these are rumors and reports. You guys take from them what you will. Emily Rogers is one of the most reliable ones out there. Now, we have an update. Emily Rogers actually mentioned uh, yesterday that we were that that Retro Studios is working on like a remake or remaster of just Metroid Prime 1. And she didn't really have any exact details on all of this. Well, there's a person over on Reset Era. He goes by the name Belmont. Uh, and he has actually leaked things in the past for Nintendo on the Reset Era forums and been right every single time. But it's only been a couple of times he's even spoken up and said anything. Uh, but he seems to really want to set the record straight with this. And my lord, are there a bunch of details. So you know what? Enjoy this uh, fan-created Metroid Prime remastering footage. Um, I'll put a link down to the full video for it. And I'm just going to read off his post because, my lord, there's a lot to digest. Here he goes. I don't usually comment on these things, but given that there's been a lot of irresponsible reporting around this project that's led to a lot of misconceptions and, in my opinion, undeserved negativity, I want to clear up a couple things here. As the cat's out of the bag now and Emily has already broken the news, I figure I can't do anything but help. First off, though, I don't know whether or not this is being announced in the Direct today. It wasn't. Of course, we know that now. I was expecting it to be announced in the E3 Direct, but when they announced Dread instead, I assumed they were going to hold off on this announcement until after Dread release, which would make sense. you got to space out announcements sometimes, especially if they're metroid related right you know you just had a metroid announcement you're going to space out the next metroid announcement so i'd be surprised if they talk about it today but if they do then that's great because i've been waiting for this to be announced for years now just so people understand what this is and what it isn't i just want to clear up the history here so people can make accurate judgments about the project and whether it's worth their money to start most every rumor that supposedly leaked about retro the last several years has been complete bullshit the stuff about them doing Star Fox Grand Prix and Labo stuff was complete bullshit. The only thing that was accurate was the rumor about the project they've been working on since Tropical Freeze released and was canceled. That was true. After that, Nintendo had them start working on this project. It was designed from the beginning as a full asset remake of the original Metroid Prime Trilogy, which might, by the way, be where some of the rumors started for Metroid Prime Trilogy. So, actually was something that they were planning to do. This treatment to all three Metroid games. All right, let's dive a little deeper into this. They didn't want them making any changes to the actual design. They just wanted a one-to-one -one remake of the original game with new art built to modern standards, down to them even reusing the original collision meshes and just replacing the art. They didn't want to mess with perfection. So this was never at any point a simple remaster of any of the games. They were always planned to be full remakes. But it was only the art that was being rebuilt. So that left their design staff with nothing to do. At the time, Nintendo of Japan was having issues with Namco's work on Prime 4, particularly the level design. So they started having retro design staff start helping with the level design on Prime 4. Meanwhile, art and programming staff were working on the Metroid Prime 1 remake. After seeing the quality of Retro's level design work on Prime 4 and the quality of their art for the remake, Nintendo of Japan decided, why are we not having Retro do Prime 4 altogether? So that was the point where they canceled things with Namco and made the announcement that they were rebooting things with Retro and put them back together with Tanabe. So I think it was a few months after this or somewhere around then, when the rumors about a Metroid Prime trilogy first came about. I believe Imran Khan was the first to scoop it. However, what he reported was largely bullshit. He said that the full trilogy was finished as a remaster and was just sitting around waiting to be released. Also, that Retro had secretly put a demo together to scoop Metroid Prime 4 from Namco. That was completely untrue. That is not how things work in this industry and definitely not how the relationship between Retro and Nintendo of Japan works this is not 
Spangleberg era retro, where they're just secretly working on their own projects, supposedly to steal projects from other studios. I feel like that was really irresponsible for Imran to claim that, as that's a really bad look for retro, and is the kind of thing that creates bad blood. Retro are good guys, and classier than that. I privately messaged Imran back in early 2019 that his reporting was largely wrong. This was not a simple remaster. Work had not yet even begun on the later two games, and the first game wouldn't be ready for some time. Also, that his statements about Retro sniping Prime 4 from Namco was completely untrue. It had been Nintendo of Japan's decision, and they were just following orders. Imran stopped responding to me, as I guess rather than do his due diligence to correct any bad reporting, he'd rather just let those bad rumors fly and soak up his 15 minutes of fame. Of note of Imran Khan, um, he has been correct on several leaks, so I'm not going to sit here and argue 15 minutes of fame. I think what happens is you have multiple sources and you already reported on some of them and then you get some conflicting information from new sources and you aren't really sure what to do at that point and since you're just waiting for things to get confirmed one way or another you just kind of let it you know kind of fly under the radar because i don't know what imran khan can do when he's got sources with conflicting information all right moving on so instead of these rumors about a prime trilogy being finished and waiting in the wings uh just kept circulating and getting reported by more people Before Retro got Prime 4 back, they've been planning for them to redo the whole trilogy. Again, I think that's probably where the Metro Prime trilogy stuff came from. Obviously, that was not going to be possible with them now doing Prime 4. So the new plan began for them to just finish up the first game. Then Nintendo would contract out the work for the subsequent games to be redone by other studios, with the Prime 1 remake serving to establish the visual bar and style for other studios to emulate. which. Again, that's completely fair. Once you have one of them out the door, it's much easier for other studios to mimic it, especially when they're not making changes to the collision and all that stuff. They're trying to keep a lot of the base underlying code as much as they can, uh, but still make this a full remake that's going to feel like a brand new experience. All right. Um, I don't know whether or not that is still the plan or if that work has even begun. I'm sort of doubtful. They've just barely finished up the work on Prime 1, just a few weeks ago. So this is definitely not something Nintendo has been sitting on for years and releasing them individually to nickel and dime everybody. Retro has put a lot of work into this project. They've seriously been working on it for years. I hope that can be appreciated. This is not one of Nintendo's usual quick minimalistic re-release cash grabs. I think this is the kind of thing we want to see from them and should reward. That's why it irritates me that all this irresponsible reporting from years past is casting a negative shadow over it, with people being led to believe Nintendo is just trying to take advantage of the fan base. Yes, that has happened from time to time, but this is not one of those cases. I don't know what the price point would ultimately be, but given the amount of work put into it, I would expect I would fully expect it to be full price. Again, There's not any new added content to my knowledge, but all the art assets have been completely rebuilt from the ground up, a la Shadow of the Colossus slash Demon Souls remake. I have not seen the game running, so I cannot comment on the finished quality of the art remake, but I have heard it's impressive for what it's worth. So hopefully that clarifies the situation here. Now, if this is all true, obviously uh, I understand the tone. This comes from someone who has the tone of a person who knows people at Retro and is expressing the frustration of the development team. So if everything he said is true, I understand the tone Um, because it really, the way that things have been described over the years didn't make Retro necessarily look great from a business perspective. Um, And obviously it, it, it sent a reputation that Nintendo's prior Wii U kind of port jobs is sort of what they're doing here, when reality is years and years of development have gone into the Prime 1, and that it's going to be something that's just going to impress. Now, I think a lot of people thought, obviously, for the Wii Trilogy, you know, the, 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 the Wii Trilogy version, you know, that could come over in HD, it'd be a pretty simple port job for Nintendo to just up it like we've seen fans do, but also at the same point, is that really what we want? I think this sounds better. Now, obviously, we'd like to have it happen to 2 and 3, and I think the success of 1, even if 2 and 3 aren't in the development yet, will lead to 2 and 3 getting it done. 
And whether or not all of them will have it done before Metroid Prime 4 comes out, that I don't know. Um, but Metroid Prime is widely considered the best of the, of, of the bunch. And obviously, if it is done, they don't want it to overshadow Metroid Dread. So it would be an announcement for next year. But this is insane to me. Um, if this is all true, yes, yes, and more yes. He referenced other games like the Dark Souls Remastered that people said, oh, look how much better this is. It mostly was the exact same game, but with completely rebuilt art assets, which made it feel like a brand new game. If that's what they're doing here, hell to the yeah, that's what I want them to do, especially leading into Metroid Prime 4 eventually coming out. Also, it's really cool to find out that they, Retro Studios might have already been working on level design for Metroid Prime 4 in the first place. You know what that means when I hear news like that? They could reuse some of those assets because, after all, they created the level design. Uh, so anyways, we'll have to see what has it with Metroid Prime 4. Does sound like Metroid Prime 1. If this is real, again, rumors, leaks, speculation, whatever, be skeptical. If this is true, we should see Metroid Prime 1 remake or definitive edition or whatever the hell they call it next year. And then, man, oh, man, oh, man, leading that into Metroid Prime 4. I know it'll feel weird not having 2 and 3, but again, 2 and 3 might be quick turnarounds. I don't know, man. I know it feels weird to go a little out of order with releases going Prime 1 to Prime 4, then back to Prime 2 and Prime 3. I know, okay, and I'm sure eventually they'll all be bundled together in some massive 4 collector pack on Nintendo's next system. But damn. I, this is what I've been wanting Nintendo to do with all of their remakes. They kind of did it with the Wind Waker. Not everything was rebuilt from the ground up, but the character models were. This is kind of what they did there. I am glad to see this treatment happening, supposedly. Again, rumors, speculation, take it all with a truckload of salt. But I'm excited if this is, in fact, what's happening. I'll be excited for Prime Trilogy HD as well. But I want more than just HD treatment if that's the other alternative on the table. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rubble Jazz from Nintendo Prime. At least it does kind of explain what Retro's been doing this whole time. Um, haven't been, been sitting on their hands with fail project after fail project, although there was one fail project in there. He notes in a reply to somebody else on Reset Era that it was some sort of adventure game that just wasn't coming together, so they scrapped it uh, and then began work on this at Nintendo's behest. So anyways, uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.